We have a vertical light rod, PQ, has a particle of 0.5 kilograms. So here is the weight force of that mass. And then we also have a particle of Q attached to it, 0.75 G. Downwards. And that forms our system. We're told the system is accelerated vertically upwards. So both of these particles will accelerate upwards. I'll call the acceleration A. And we're told that this occurs because of a vertical force of magnitude 50 newtons that is applied to Q. So Q will be pushed upwards with a force of 50 newtons. And we're asked to find the thrust in the rod. So we need to think about which direction will the thrust in the rod be. So let's try and think of this intuitively. Object P is experiencing an upwards acceleration. Right now, we only have a downward force of 0.5 g acting on P. Therefore, there must be some kind of upwards force, and that would be the thrust. So the thrust minus the 0.5 g, that would be the overall upwards force that will cause P to accelerate upwards. And similarly for Q, well, P is above it. P is pushing down on Q, so the force from the rod on Q should be downwards. So force of T on Q acting downwards. And if you're not sure of the difference between thrust and tension, think of this example. Imagine if you're holding your pen across your chest horizontally. So here is the pen. Here's one of your hands. Here's the other. And then you're pulling the pen apart. So if you're pulling something, if you're pulling something apart, then there will be a tension force in the object. And if you imagine your hands slipping or the pen breaking, then your hands would fly apart away from each other. So for that reason, the pen must be pulling your hands together. Your left hand will be pulled towards the right, and your right hand will be pulled towards the left. And that will be the direction of the tension force from the rod, or from your pen rather, on your hands. And for a thrust force, so imagine the same scenario. So you still have your pen across your chest horizontally, but now instead of pulling it apart, you're pushing it together. So if you're pushing it together, there is a compressive force in the pen. Whenever you have a compressive force in an object, like a rod, like your pen, then there will be a thrust force in that object. So as you're compressing this pen, you're pushing your hands together, or trying to push your hands together, the pen is exerting an outward force on your hands to resist this force. So therefore, the thrust force will be towards the left on your left hand, and towards the right on your right hand. They're usually given the same symbol, T, but they can mean different things depending on whether you have a compressive force or a tensile force. A tensile force means a pulling force. So when you have a tensile force, there will be tension. That's when you're pulling something apart. And when you have a compressive force, when you're, com when you're pushing something together, you will have a thrust force. Okay, so now that we have our force diagram, we can then work out what T is. There's a few ways in which we can do this. We can consider P and Q separately, and we can also consider the whole object as one system. So I'm gonna first start off by considering P and Q separately. So for P, P experiences two forces, the tension going upwards and the weight going downwards. And T minus 0.5 G, that would be the overall upwards force. That will therefore be equal to the mass times the acceleration as this is the resultant force, so it's equal to ma. And similarly for q, q experiences, q is also accelerating upwards. 50 newtons is the upwards force. The two downwards forces are 0.75 g and also t. So they're opposing the 50 newton force. This is the overall upwards force, and that will then be equal to ma. So 0.75a. So I'm going to call this equation 1, equation 2. So we could stop here. What I mean by stop here is we don't have to form any more equations. We could just solve these two simultaneously and then work out what t is. I'm going to show you one more equation as well, just so you fully understand the scenario and you can see all the different ways in which we can solve this question. So if we were to consider the object, so the two masses, as well as a light vertical rod, as one single object, one single mass, that one single mass has an overall weight of 1.25 g. 
and the upwards force on the overall mass is the 50 newton force. The thrust forces are internal forces. An external object is not exerting this force on our system. So the 50 newton force is an example of an external force. Something is pushing Q up. And similarly, the weight force is also an external force. The earth is pulling down on this object. But the thrust forces are internal. It's the rod that exerts those forces on P and Q. And the rod is part of this one single object. So we can ignore them. Internal forces always cancel out. It's only the external forces that we need to worry about. And there's only two of them, 50 newtons upwards and 1.25 g downwards. Again, the acceleration is upwards, A. So then we can break down that scenario. I'll say S for the whole system. Upwards force is 15, minus the downwards force of 1.25 g. And that will then be equal to MA, so 1.25 A. And that's equation three. So what's nice about this equation is that we can just work out A straight away from that, and then plug it into one of P and Q. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. So long as you've got two of these equations and you're working, you should be able to work out t in the end. So I'm going to solve equation 3. Equation 3, if I rearrange it, becomes a is equal to 15 minus 1.25g, all over 1.25. And this will give me 2.2 meters per second squared. We can then put this acceleration into equation 1. So equation 1, t is equal to 0.5a plus 0.5g. That's just bringing this over to the right side. Type this into your calculator, and you end up with 6 newtons, which will be the final answer.